But new Meta Quest Pro recently got released and I really liked the video they did for it. So let's create a synergy need today. This tutorial comes in four bits. First, let's import the model so we kind of know what skill we're working with. Secondly, we want to create the base structure for the cushion. Then third, we want to apply these stitches on top of this kind of cushion. And then fourth, we want to add the collision in with the headset. And that's it. So first bit, let's import the headset. So let's drop down the geo node. Let's call it headset. Basically, I've downloaded a model for this. But if you want to follow along, what you can do as well is just drop down a box. And because it's Houdini, you can always swap it out later. I would go with something like, I think a headset is probably around 30 centimeters wide. But anyway, just find a shape that looks roughly like a headset to you. I'm going to go ahead and import this FBX I downloaded from Turbo Squid. I'll link it up in the description. And for the collision, I'm going to use the low poly model. I want to convert the units and then reload. And see, now we got the headset. So then we want to transform, bring up our handles and like rotate it 90 degrees. Then I want to axis align it. So it sits on the floor. The offset here should be how far it goes into the kind of like cloth we're creating. So this is, yeah, this is kind of up to you. How far do you want it to like penetrate? That sounds gross. <laughs> like how far do you want it to go into your cloth? And that should be this offset value because what we're can then do is add a transform node and then we can end this translate on zero and then offset it probably like just a little bit along the y-axis but this is something we can do later we can just attach a null here and say out headset and we can call this animation and so whatever you use you can link it up like that you can swap it out with the box as well and uh, yeah they should just work so that's the headset now let's go ahead and create our surface and let's enable the headset for now so we kind of have an idea for skill and then later we can disable it again if it's a bit distracting so i think about two meters should be enough for this actually i think the headset is slightly too big let's template this yeah so i think i want to scale down the headset by like half the size because if you see this is 30 centimeters wide so that to me seems like a good size for a headset. I think 60 centimeters wide is a really big headset. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that seems to make sense. So let's go back into a surface now. And I think one meter wide seems quite good. So we have a bit of like room around the headset, but we, we don't waste too much time on unnecessary simulation. So this part of the tutorial is inspired by Antecma's Silly Pillow. So definitely have a look in that if you want to dive deeper into this. Should go without saying Antecma is an amazing Houdini resource anyway. So even if it's not for this, check them out. But basically what we want to do is we want to create two grids on top of each other, stitch that together, and that should give us our base shape. So I decided to go with alternating triangles because we want to create these like triangles that stick out. So you want to have some geometry that represents that shape. So I want to grab all these points on the edges just so I can stitch that together with the lower one. So what I can just do is lay down a group, disable base group, set it to points, and then say include by edges and then the unshared edges. So we always get the outside points. And we can say this is edge lower perhaps. And because mine is set to dollar s here, it will give my name whatever is in here. So this will now be the edge lower group and you can see the my middle mouse buttoning. Because I want to make this lower, I want to reverse the normals. So now it's pointing downwards. And then I want to have a transform node. Oops. So I just move it downwards ever so slightly. I think maybe like 005. We can test this out later how much we want this. But basically what I can do now is I can just copy this bit, paste it and delete the reverse normals. And uh, so we have the edge upper. So we have two separate groups and it's now pointing upwards. And what I can do is I can copy this parameter and then I can say minus and then paste relative reference. And now, because minus, minus times minus is plus. So now this will transform upwards. So it's it's always comes from the middle, basically. If I select these two nodes and I alt click, I get a merge node. So now we have two pieces of geometry. And that's our like really basic setups. I think I want to increase 
the rows and columns already quite a bit, so we have a bit more geometry to work with. And then you can just do the configure balloon because we basically want some cloth constraints and we also want some pressure to blow up those like different areas. So first of all, let's stitch these edge points together. And we can do that by having a vellum weld points. And basically here we want weld the lower edges to the upper edges. And if we attach a vellum solver, we can see if this works. So let's disable the gravity. So it won't fall down and increase our cache a bit if we have the memory for it. And then let's see if this stitches together. See, it will. It has a bit of a weird animation now. That will fix in a second. And the stitching part is working, as you can see in this frame. So that's good. So the thing I want to do now is I don't want my object to move in the scene because if you think about it, the headset needs to go through it. So these edges need to stay in place. Otherwise the whole cloth will just move with the headset, which is not what we want. So I'm going to pin the points. So if we select a vellum constraint and we hook it up in between, I want to pin these to target, pin to target. And I basically want to select the point groups and then edge lower. I can just say as edge and a asterisk. So we'll select all our edge groups and then we can pin those to the edges. So now it will just stay in place, uh, which is exactly what we want. Then by trial and error, I figured out the following values for my cloth constraint, which I had a stretch stiffness of 2000 and a damping ratio of 0 0.1. Again, this is by trial and error. So I've quite a stiff kind of cloth simulation. And then for the pressure, I had a stiffness of 100 times 100 and a damping of 0 0.01. And the rest length scale for me worked well with 50. And what I figured out is that you really have to balance the rest length with the stiffness. So if you up the rest length, then your stiffness needs to go accordingly. Otherwise you get really weird simulations. And also another value you want to play with is the transform. So the, the more you move your transfer up, the more inflated your structure is going to be. So that's something else you want to like play with. But for me, this value worked quite well. So I'm going to leave it at that. So now we have a basic setup. It's time to create these stitches in the middle. So the way we create these nice kind of like stitches is by generating lines along this pattern. That's why we chose this type of geometry. And then we want to weld those in our vellum stitch here. So let's first drop down a line. And we don't want it to move in the Y axis. We want it to move in Z axis. Then what we want to do is we want to transform it and we want to transform it like 45 degrees. So we have a nice diagonal line. Then we want to copy and transform this. So we move it 0.2 along the X axis. And I think I had 10 copies in my version, but again, you should do whatever works for you. And then if we append a match size node, then we can center it. So this will now always be in the center. And I think we want to make our lines a bit bigger because they don't fit the length of the mesh. And then we can sweep them simply. So we can just say sweep node and then let's get a round tube. This is way too big, so let's scale it down. And we'll have to figure out later which values will perfectly work for us. But this is one setup. Then what we can do is we could just simply copy and paste this and then transform this minus 45 degrees. So we have our other diagonal. And then we could just merge these together again. And then we can create a group just after this group. <laughs> so we could just say group. Then in this group, we disable the base group and set it to points. And then say include by bounding region and set it to bounding object. And then we can pipe in this geometry. So now you can see everything that is inside this object is now selected by the points and we do the same we call this stitch lower oops stitch i can't type stitch lower stitch there we go still early and now we have stitch upper and what we want to do now is we want to update this in our weld constraints so here we can just say stitch lower we want to weld that with our stitch upper. And if you highlight the solver now and save, let's see what we get. So it's doing something, but I don't think it's really working yet. So let's see if we up our rows and columns a bit. 
I think I ended up with 200 by 200. So we get a really nice high density mesh. And let's see what we get now. Now you can see it's working, but I think the stitches are a bit big now for this resolution. It could be a look you're going for, but I want them to be a bit smaller. So let's go back to the group. And as you can see, we're selecting quite a few points. So the way to tweak that is just by dialing down the radius quite a bit. And now you can see we're only getting these. I think I might do it even, even more so. And let's copy this radius and paste relative reference in the other one. So we always have the same values. And maybe if we set it to 0 0.02, are we still selecting anything? Yes. And let's see what we get now. And that's looking a lot better, I think. So for my final simulation, I set it constraint iteration to 50 because it didn't need a lot more. And the velocity damping, I set to 0 0.1 because later when we get the collisions, you wanted to damp it all a bit because otherwise it's too wobbly, like it moves too much. Again, it could be a look you're going for, but kind of coming from the reference, this seemed to be more how they did it, I think. So yeah, let's add in the collision now. So first, let's animate this headset. So let's set, maybe let's start animating this around 25. So what I did is I went to see when the animation kind of established itself because these pressures, they're building up. So the mesh is inflating and therefore you want to see when it's in a nice resting position that from there we can get the headset into it. So as you can see, it's still like a bit wobbly here. But I think around frame 25, it's kind of okay. Again, this is up to your own taste. And let's disable the surface for a second so it doesn't have to simulate. And now if we hit Alt right bracket, we get a new view here. And then if we go to animation editor, we can animate a bit easier. So we want to end our animation at zero on Y in the translate. And then it's up to how far your camera is away. But I think I would like it quite, quite close up, but it doesn't really matter. Just set a keyframe for how high it is in the Y. And then I think in order to get a nice look, you want this headset to go down like ever so slightly further. So what we can do is we can just grab this handle, pull it up a bit. And then basically once it hits the cloth, it will just try and keep going into it. I think that's kind of like a nice look for this. And we can zoom in and we can tweak these handles a bit until we get like a nice animation. Let's maybe hit this and drag out these curves. And you can even drag this out even more. Like it's really, really up to you what kind of look you want out of this. But basically I think the nice illusion we want to give is it, it kind of like hits this cloth quite quickly. And then it, because of the friction of trying to go to that cloth, it's, it's kind of held back from it. So that, that's kind of like what I have in mind for this kind of animation. I think I could even tweak this a bit more. I think this might even be quicker because it kind of slams in and then it hits the cloth and then maybe it still moves too much. Like we could reduce it down even further, but I don't want to spend too much time on this because this, this is up to your own interpretation. I think that's kind of okay. It works for now. And we already have a null for out headset. And the reason why I split this out into different objects is if we want to render this later, it's a lot easier to just grab one geometry stream here and then the other one there. So now we can get this in here by an object merge and then let's select our headset, transform it into this object. And then we can even attach a null and say in collision. So if we want to change it later, we can. And let's move it here. And then the only thing we really have to do is just pipe this into our collision slot. And then this should work. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hit simulate. All right, so let's see what we got. I think that looks quite nice. It's like a nice soft animation. It's not too rubbery or anything. And you can really see the impact nicely. You can see the interaction with the cloth around it. I'll probably do a nice close up shot, maybe a bit lower so you can get some nice depth of field on it. And that's it. Like if you want to get something a bit closer to the real example, you have to change this stitch pattern into something they had. But I just want to show you the techniques of how this works and then you can make your own version of it and your own style. And that's it for this week's tutorial. If you like it, please like and subscribe. It helps me with the algorithm and I'll see you in the next one.